uh, Didier Cornell. Didier Cornell is a vice chairman of the French Transhumanist Association, Technoprog, and uh, a campaign for research into a much longer life and good health. He's co-president co uh, of the Hills Association, I have to say, uh, we, that uh, the Health Association with DJ uh, is the, the main source of uh, financement for, for this uh, transvision. So uh, thank you a lot to the Health Organization and DJ Colonel. Um, DJ um, has published uh, different works. Um, for example, um, Et si on arrêtait de vieillir in French from uh, 2013. And yes, okay, with myself, uh, Technoprog. Uh, the Transhumanism au service du progrès social, Transhumanism for social progress in 2016. Uh, Didi, thank you, and you have the floor. Yeah. Namiddag allemaal, behalve de ambtenaar, voor de ambtenaar en dat is goedenavond. Ik mag het zeggen omdat ik ben een Franstalige Belg ambtenaar. Um, hello uh, everybody, up now seriously we are going to begin. Uh, yeah, so this uh, uh, will be about uh, how to better share and use health data for uh, longevity. And uh, let's uh, begin with a few things that you probably already uh, know, but still, so a few facts about uh, longevity and about uh, healthy longevity. So the first uh, uh, is today, like uh, every day, about 120,000 people will die of diseases related to old age. For example, two days ago, Judith Campisi, sadly, who was uh, one major uh, researcher for uh, longevity. Uh, yeah, that thing. Okay. Um, so the, the, the death toll is uh, in countries like uh, Netherlands, about 90% of people uh, dying are dying of, of, of the disease related to aging, but uh, in the world it's about 70%, and even if the poorest country in the world, it's the first cause of uh, death, largely the first cause of death. So um, when you speak about uh, uh, when you speak about uh, death of old age and causes of death in general, so uh, that's all causes of death here uh, together. So there are three big categories uh, of diseases related to aging that kill us. Uh, the, two, the three biggest categories are cardiovascular diseases. There we have kind of rapid progress. Cancers, we have kind of a progress. And neurodegenerative diseases, we sadly don't uh, uh, understand more and more concerning neurodegenerative diseases, but there are still no real progress for uh, fighting against. But the important thing, the elephant in the room, is that um, actually, even when, you, when we die of infectious diseases, for example, COVID, flu, tuberculosis, uh, it's related, the chance to die is higher uh, with age. When you're falling, also uh, young people who fall, they have uh, like uh, less than 1% chance to, uh, less than 1 per thousand chance to die of this, uh, and uh, old people, one of, one of 10%. <laughs> Also, the, the one important thing that uh, sadly transhumanists uh, uh, often uh, forget is that uh, we don't progress so much concerning the maximal lifespan. We don't progress uh, concerning the maximal lifespan. So the, the first person who was ever reaching the age of uh, 100 years was the widow of, for sure, I mean, uh, was the widow of Cicero. And she died, so more than 2,000 years ago when she was 103 or 104 years old. Uh, and uh, uh, the oldest person ever uh, is, was Jean Calment, and she died in, uh, and she died in 1997 when she was uh, 122 years old. Um, okay? Today the oldest woman in the world is uh, well, 116 only. And uh, the oldest man in the world is 100, 114. Also, one very important thing is sadly that for the first time in recent history, for the first time since uh, uh, the Second World War II, 
during the COVID period, we had a global decrease of life expectancy, expectancy not an, uh, a global decrease in life expectancy. It, it was not a small one. It was uh, almost one year in 2020 and almost uh, uh, nine months in 2021. So this is really kind of uh, depressingly uh, fascinating that we had that. And now it seems to be uh, going better uh, again. But still, we are still at the moment concerning the, uh, at least the official statistics concerning uh, life expectancy, not even in the situation of 2019. I took the uh, information about this country, so Netherlands. So you see that very clearly uh, that, uh, uh, yeah, 2020 was a very bad year, and now it seems to be going up again. It seems to be, but for example, just two days ago, I read that uh, the China, so the, who was the biggest country in the world, no, it's India, but that China had more deaths than uh, ever since uh, 1974, I think, uh, because of COVID probably, uh, and because of the uh, political aspects. Uh, I think it is very po probably possible to find a treatment against aging in 20, within 20 to 30 years. But it will be also probably, very probably, complicated and expensive. And, of course, big data and artificial intelligence can help us. A few facts about uh, big data for health. First, uh, it, it has been said, said very often, I didn't find an official uh, reference for this, but that about 30% of big data is health big data, so there is a lot of health big data. It's, of course, in the scientific literature, it's in your uh, smartphone, and uh, uh, the tech giants own a lot, a lot of this. Um, and then in the hospitals, uh, your medical doctor, and so on. So there are uh, hundreds of thousands of healthcare apps, hundreds of thousands, Many of them are used by millions of, well, many, not uh, a few, hundreds of them are, are used by millions of people. But as far as I know, there is zero a largely used public space to share personal health data uh, to facilitate medical research, and zero uh, such app really made to uh, facilitate health medical uh, research. So for me, that's probably the most important point. So sometimes I heard, yeah, we need more medical data. No, we don't need more medical data. We have medical data for billions of people today, but uh, we need to be able to share the, this data. So, and with this data, we, 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 we could be able to, uh, to know which human clinical trials should be started immediately, to know which existing drugs have positive effect and also negative effect and for small uh, longevity progress and to prepare a uh, breakthrough to go further. The, the, legal, the legal and the de facto situation concerning uh, uh, sharing of health data at the moment, um, maybe not in the world, well, in, in, let's say in developed countries, uh, at least uh, can be summarized as this. Um, yeah, uh, you are uh, obliged to share your health data with private companies and with public uh, entities. So, yeah, of course, if you have to go to the hospital, you are not obliged to sign what they are asking you to sign, but you are obliged to go uh, if you want to survive. So, OK, uh, yeah, at least if you want to see the doctor. So if you want to use their services uh, and these institutions, in many cases, they will sell the data or exactly legally they uh, they will not sell the data, they will sell the access to the data, but only with many uh, restrictions. So in no country you are really allowed to uh, share this health data uh, and to make uh, medical research uh, uh, easy. And uh, even if uh, uh, you decide to share your, uh, your data, there is a problem because scientists scientists will not be uh, willing to use it. And even if scientists are willing to use it, they will have problem to publish, you know, because it's, uh, because there will, there will be no uh, GDPR, there, there will be no GDPR compliant and so on. So 
what could we do for a few open uh, solutions? Uh, yeah, first I want to do, I want to say there is this idea that uh, health data is the most sensitive uh, thing uh, in the world. I don't think it's true at all. I mean, uh, your your health data is less sensitive than your political life, than your sex life, than most of your private life, um, and it will it would be even less a problem if there was not this problem, this, this situation that uh, in most countries your health data is sold between markets. Um, so if it was what kind of, uh, if it was kind of, uh, the, the mic. if it was, was kind of uh, uh, free to use, there would be less problem of uh, uh, health data stolen and so on. Okay. What I personally hope and wish it is that we have a system of, let's say, patent cleft, you know, no patent, and a real of uh, sharing of health data. Among many uh, problems of the situation, no, uh, or of, let's say, uh, private interest is the fact that uh, positive results are only uh, shared with uh, patents and with uh, specific rights and so on, but even worse, the fact that negative results, they are not published at all many, uh, at, in many cases. Because uh, it's not good, there is nothing to win for the uh, organizations they are in, that, who are um, making the, the research, and there is no patents and so on, so there is nothing, uh, no obligation of publication. We should, I think, constantly remind that when you are asking to the citizens, do you want to share your health data or not, most uh, citizens um, uh, largely agree that we should do that. They are only afraid that there would be problem with their insurance company and so on. And it could be solved. I will come to this uh, later. Yeah, so in theory, the best way to share the health data would be at the world level and the, the best uh, um, organization for health at the world level is the World Health Organization, but sadly, they are not working so much in uh, this direction, but uh, there is the what's called the European Health Data uh, Space, the EHDS, and there things are going very, very good, except that it's not going fast enough, but for the rest, I think it's really uh, a very positive thing. So there are uh, three uh, big principles concerning the, uh, what's written in the, the, this very, very long uh, uh, text concerning the European health data. So interconnectivity of data databases, of course, at the European level. So it means that normally in a, um, if things are really going like uh, they want, uh, that one citizen going uh, to another uh, European country will be able to give the uh, medical information to the doctor in uh, each country. There is the principle of what they call altruist databases. What does it mean? It means uh, uh, that we can, you can use this data for, um, yeah, for uh, uh, your own health goals, of course, for your medical doctors, and also for scientific goals, but not for commercial goals. And then, yeah, that it can be shared uh, with uh, scientists. So you have there, um, uh, so there, there was just uh, one month and a few days ago, a vote in the European Commission, and that is, you have uh, there a few of the arguments uh, who, with, who were given by the, the political parties voting in favor of this uh, regulation so that uh, there is a support for research without unnecessary GDPR restrictions and supporting, I will come back to this uh, opt-out um, option. So this was from the biggest, I think it's the biggest uh, uh, movement in the European Parliament at the moment, the Christian Democrats, and the European Commissioner for Health uh, also mm -hmm. said that, uh, that uh, uh, so digital transformation of healthcare is necessary in Europe by giving citizens control over their data. And this was the result of the vote. So very, very positive for me. So, the, so 500, uh, more than 500 votes in favor, less than 100 uh, uh, against and a few uh, abstention. And for those who are interested in politics, you can see that's more 
uh, extreme uh, right and left uh, were uh, against, no big surprise. And yeah, that's funny, I didn't notice that. Abstention is just after. But uh, that's uh, not, uh, not, very not very important. The most important thing is there was a very large uh, majority in favor. No, um, it's only a text. So there was a, a first text uh, uh, coming from the Commission. After that, there is a second text adopted by the European Parliament. Uh, Nino and I uh, had no time uh, yet to see the differences, but both differences are concerning uh, questions of uh, privacy. And after that, there is something called the trilogue, so a dialogue between uh, um, different institutions of uh, at the European level, uh, European Parliament, Commission, and Council, if I don't mistake, make a mistake. Uh, so, but if everything is going good, uh, in two years, uh, we will have this uh, really as a fact. Okay, now coming to, we should use AGI. Well, we should use AI, artificial intelligence, and one day AGI, maybe. Um, for healthy longevity, but also, I mean, that I, I think that using um, artificial intelligence uh, as a first goal for all questions related to longevity is something who is going to diminish risk, existential risk, you know, because, uh, yeah, when you, uh, when you use artificial intelligence yeah, for healthy uh, solutions, it's less dangerous than, for example, using it for weapons. <laughs> okay, um, so, uh, and also because artificial intelligence doesn't have the problem of mortality, uh, science, uh, terror management theory. So the fact that uh, we, many of us, uh, many e uh, even scientists think that that is a good thing because we don't have the choice that death of all age is a good good thing, but the real reason is we don't have a choice. <coughs> uh, yeah, we should, uh, we should use uh, AGI combined with uh, human intelligence, human general intelligence, because at the moment um, artificial intelligence is still pretty stupid in some cases, so really uh, we need, especially uh, for health, to have the both uh, systems working together. So, for example, concerning, uh, uh, you probably, you maybe uh, know that the best uh, systems of artificial intelligence are for everything concerning uh, images, uh, but still, uh, even for concerning medical images, at the moment, the uh, system of uh, one uh, system of artificial intelligence plus one uh, medical doctor specialized in the field is working better than uh, the artificial intelligence alone. We could use uh, open longevity, but for this uh, it's too late to discuss because there was, <laughs> this was the discussion uh, yesterday, but it was recorded, so you will be able to see it after the uh, conference if you want. They will be uh, more about this also during the conference uh, from uh, 5 to 9 p.m. CET in uh, a, a bit more than uh, one uh, month. So if you are interested, uh, please uh, let me know. My data will be uh, there at the end. One and uh, one of my uh, one of our goals is to have uh, people from the European Union, but uh, they are not very, uh, very easy to, uh, to convince to come. So if you know one uh, European commissioner, <laughs> yeah, don't hesitate to let me know. Okay, um, then the last part, I will, oh no, no, uh, I, I still have time. Uh, the last part is about uh, what do we need once that we have this uh, uh, data uh, shared for clinical test for longevity, it's kind of a, a reminder and we were not speaking about this uh, specifically, uh, I mean, uh, I think uh, today. So first, I think it's important to say, to, to know that there are more scientists than ever in the history of uh, humanity, but there is also more bureaucracy than ever in the history of humanity. So that's another question, discussion, but for me it's absolutely uh, fascinating this uh, situation that uh, uh, it's like each technological progress is coming with his uh, with uh, with more bureaucracy. So one example is uh, to test a new drug in Europe, but it's the same situation 
uh, in the US, even uh, maybe uh, worst, it's kind um, of, it cost everything included one billion. I even read uh, two billion uh, euro or dollars. It's uh, about uh, uh, the same. So totally, totally, totally crazy because about 80 to 90 percent of this is, uh, let's say, bureaucracy. Uh, yeah. We need, of course, to test uh, on animals. So they are, they are the classical uh, mice, but they are uh, and Drosophila and sea elegans, but they are also um, animals who are easy to study, relatively easy to study, and who have, who have very long lives or very short lives. So the beautiful Nick Morats is an example. Uh, on your left, uh, they're living, uh, he seems to be with no senescence, but there are discussions. And uh, the beautiful, really beautiful uh, fish there on the right is living a few weeks in an aquarium, uh, weeks or months. So very uh, interesting to study. We need uh, so less bureaucratic and uh, faster uh, system. Yeah. So uh, in, in for yeah, when 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 I spoke about bureaucracy, one of the aspects of uh, bureaucracy is the ethical authorization called the IRB in the US that takes uh, many months and even uh, in one uh, uh, one work that uh, that Hills is uh, sup uh, financially uh, supporting it took uh, everything included uh, more than one year uh, and I don't know what's the precise situation in the US but I know for example in Germany when you have the authorization in one round you know so in one part of the country you don't have the authorization in other lender. Crazy, crazy, crazy. We need, of course, uh, double blind trials. I suppose most of you know what it is. And it's important to say that uh, um, if there are, so some people will speak about ethical concerns, even for volunteers. Uh, um, but, and they will say, yeah, but if you have uh, one placebo group, uh, they will not benefit. Well, even if you have one placebo group, um, and one group with a new therapy, uh, the group with only the placebo will have a better, uh, will be better followed than ordinary uh, citizens. So they will be beneficiary uh, anyway. We need uh, people who are old enough, so 70, 80, 95, even uh, 98 years old uh, for women, because you know that women live longer than uh, men in general. Uh, well informed, uh, in good health, and interested for themselves. Uh, uh, and uh, for the community, we need uh, drugs. I don't have time to go in the detail. Uh, for me, the, the most, uh, my, maybe, no, no, I don't have time to go to the detail, but I want to say two things. Uh, the first one is for me, the most promising aspect is uh, the gene therapy, uh, but it's not yet possible to have a gene therapy uh, with humans for one product to make people, uh, to, to try to make uh, people live longer. And the uh, most well-known product is metformin. And this is totally crazy that uh, metformin, uh, metformin is a product uh, that exists since, well, I think okay, very, very long, so there is no more problem of patent. It's uh, supposed to be good for longevity, and there are theories about that since more than 20 years. And since the uh, clinical trial called the TAME is not, still not started, and it would cost uh, about nothing for uh, a state, so something like $50 million. It's something I, I really cannot understand why it's so difficult to have uh, money for this. We need uh, one, okay. We, uh, we need uh, good biomarkers uh, and public results. Okay, I will not come back to uh, this, except except to say that we need this. Uh, it's it's important to know about uh, all clinical trials, not only after but also before, because otherwise there is a big risk that the that there will be uh, problems concerning uh, uh, reliability of this. Uh, we need a global project like a moon project. Um, we need money, but this would this will be a longer discussion for later. And I come to the conclusion now. Um, yeah, maybe first, um, what we need in a few words is reliable shared big health data. 
curation, that's a big, big, big problem to uh, have uh, yeah, reliable data, fast clinical tests, test, more research, and a sense of urgency. That's, that's really important. And uh, for me, the, the best situation summarized would be a system trusted by citizens, managed by a public institutions, or maybe a non-profit organization, where by default, opt out. That's one thing I want to explain. So normally, uh, sorry, uh, opt out, it means that uh, if you don't want to share your data, you have to say it, otherwise you share your data. Um, anonymized or pseudonymized, uh, so uh, it means that you cannot find again, especially if you are not a, uh, a scientist, uh, uh, can be used for scientific research, research and not for any other use to start clinical test to enable everyone wishing it, not going to be uh, compulsory to live a radically longer and healthier lives. Okay, and then, uh, uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, working for in this uh, matter in uh, HEALS and in the International Longevity Alliance. If you want uh, this new selector in uh, English, Francais, Netherlands, uh, Dutch, <laughs> or Spanish, uh, you can have a free, um, you can subscribe free will, free, sorry, freely, for the two next centuries, after I will be paid, you will have to pay. Uh, and if you disagree with me, or even if you agree with me, you can send me an email with questions. Thank you.